Okay, so it is 10 a.m. on a Thursday, which means it's Long's coffee break. Um, my name is Jeff Rodell. I'm a sales engineer with Long. Today, I have Tim McNulty with me from RM Manifold, and we are going to discuss stairwell pressurization systems. Uh, Tim, thanks for joining us this morning. I'm going to let you go ahead and take it away from here. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, trying to see. There we go. See if I can switch the slides. Uh, we're trying to, so stairwell pressurization, we actually got into stairwell pressurization because like over the last 10 years, people have been trying to use our supply air uh, controller for stairwell pressurization. And um, we we're kind of a little bit hesitant of that because we didn't really know uh, exactly, you know, what all the ins and outs were of it. And so what we ended up doing is we went ahead and just said, okay, well, we're going to research this and come up with a dedicated stairwell pressurization control. Uh, the whole process took about four years and, uh, two years, pretty much of research, you know, asking fire protection engineers questions and just kind of going in and researching stuff. It took about another two years to get a developed control and get it listed. And then we released it, um, you know, over, I'm going to think almost two years ago, and uh, it's really been a hit in uh, several locations. And I appreciate Long giving us this opportunity. But here's just kind of a rundown of uh, some stairwell pressurization and then what our controllers can do for that. Uh, not sure if any of you remember or heard of the fire in uh, MGM Grand in Las Vegas in 1980. Uh, the fire ended up starting in the first floor. And it was actually put out fairly quickly, but it just generated an enormous amount of smoke. And at the time, Las Vegas didn't require, require pressurized stairwells. What they did is they had passive stairwells where the door, like you'd go into the stairwell and the door should lock behind you so that you can't get back out into the corridor. And the reason for that is if you have open, open doors in your stairwell on a passive system, that stairwell turns into a gigantic chimney and it sucks in the smoke. Well, in this situation, um, people got nervous when the doors were closed behind them, so they propped the doors open. Uh, which had the stairwells and just a lot of smoke. And in this uh, case, over 60 people died in stairwells. And since then, uh, Las Vegas has required pressurized stairwells, as many other um, jurisdictions have as well. Uh, so what's the purpose of stairwell pressurization? Well, the big thing is, is to protect life and uh, have a tenable environment to get out of the building. So you just want a smoke-free or as smoke-free as you can in an environment to get out of the building so occupants can get out safely. As far as what are the, the issues in... Uh, Pressurization. Well, the big thing is, is, you know, buildings can be complicated and, you know, the, the more modern the buildings are, you know, the more complicated the buildings can be, you know, architectural designs and whatnot. And one of the complications we can see is, you know, the taller the building, the more difficult it is to, you know, really control that stairwell pressurization and the stairwell pressure. Uh, here's a chart from the ASHRAE Smoke Control Handbook that kind of shows you the pressure differential in buildings. It's showing you kind of a stack effect and reverse stack. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, uh, you know, from the first floor to the, the top floor, uh, if you don't have any vertical leakage in the building, it can be pretty drastic. So, like, your first floor will be under a completely different pressure than your top floor. And that reverses, you know, between summer and winter as well. Now, if you do have vertical leakage, then you'll see your, your building pressure actually kind of normalizes uh, back into, you know, more of a straight up and down curve. Uh, however, nowadays, a lot of uh, jurisdictions are asking people to pressurize their elevators because that's the elevators is usually the biggest point of vertical leakage. Um, as soon as you start pressurizing your elevators, then uh, stairwell pressure, pressurization actually becomes a lot more difficult. So when we're doing stairwell pressurization, what are some of the things that we look at? Uh, some of the big references, you know, the big references, uh, the Handbook of Smoke Control Engineering uh, by ASHRAE. Uh, chapters 10 and 20, and then NFPA 92. And NFPA 92 is a relatively new standard. Whoops. Uh, don't know why it went forward. Well, uh, anyway, NFPA 92, let me see if I can go back, is a relatively new standard. Um, uh, a new standard for uh, smoke control uh, applications. Anyhow, it, uh, most jurisdictions haven't adopted an FPA 92. If you have adopted an FPA 92, then it does require all of your uh, smoke control systems to be UL 864. And I'll get into that in a little bit, but that was that extra standard that we showed on the side, which is UL 864. Uh, some of the terminology for uh, uh, stairwell pressurization, one of them is stack effect. If you guys have ever been at vented boilers and water heaters, you're familiar with stack effect where you have hot flue gas, it's gonna wanna rise. 
uh, depending how tall your chimney is, the more it wants to rise. Um, the buildings are the same way, you know, when it's cold outside, uh, that air is going to want to rise up through the stairwell. When it's hot outside in the summertime, though, you're going to actually have a reverse stack effect. So it does kind of change back and forth. Now, there's two types of uh, smoke control systems. There is the uh, passive system, passive type of system, which is what we saw in the M MGM Grand. And then you have the active system, which most people have moved to today. There's still a few jurisdictions out there that allow the passive systems, but there's not as, not as many as the people that want the active systems. So active systems, what does that mean? Uh, active systems, you know, usually use supply fans, sometimes supply and exhaust fans, uh, dampers and related controllers uh, to maintain that pressure in the stairwell. Uh, to different types of active systems, you have non-compensated systems, compensated systems and then compensated systems modulating airflow supply. A uh, non-compensated system is kind of just, it is what it sounds like. Uh, basically you've got a fan on there, you turn it on and let it rip. Uh, compensated systems, you know, is a little bit better where, you know, you turn a fan on and then you may have like a barometric damper or something like that to relieve the air because uh, we don't want to underpressurize or overpressurize the stairwell. And we have, we do have a much larger presentation uh, that we can get into later about this, but um, you know, this is kind of just the highlights. Now, when we're getting air into the stairwell, there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, the one is we're going to focus on, uh, again, the uh, more of the uh, compensated systems and not just the uh, non-compensated systems. But getting air into the stairwell, there's a couple ways to do it. One is a single point injection. And single point injection, you can put a fan at the top, at the bottom. You just basically blow air into the stairwell. Uh, both NFPA 92 and the ASHRAE Smoke Control Handbook say that if your building's over about 75 feet, uh, maybe 100 feet, that you really need to be leery of using one of these systems because it's really hard to get the air and make sure that you're pressurizing that stairwell all the way down, especially let's say if you put your fan at the top and you open up that door at the top, that stairwell door at the top, it's just going to short circuit right outside that door. A uh, better way to do it is multiple point injection, especially you know if you've got your building, it's over six, seven stories. You want to do something called multiple point injection, which is where you take a shaft and you run it down the stairwell. And in that shaft, you have injection points along the way so that you, you can actually balance the air going in, you know, going into that shaft and going into the, the particular locations in the stairwell. Uh, for multiple point injection, you can put the fan at the top, at the bottom. Um, code actually kind of recommends putting the fan at the bottom. Now that's uh, not typically easy because you don't have the room, but the reason is, is because you want to make sure your, your air that you're dumping into the stairwell is clean. And since smoke tends to rise, um, putting the fan at the bottom is really kind of a better way, but most of the time we can't do that. We have to put the fan at the top. Uh, so when we do that, we just need to make sure that we're ducting that air away from, uh, you know, mechanical exhaust that might expel smoke. We just want to make sure we have the cleanest air we can uh, to get into that, you know, to, I guess, get into that stairwell. Uh, here again, there's two, two points of multiple point injection. And on uh, tall buildings, we have multiple, multiple point injections. We've done uh, several of these in New York. Uh, we're looking at one in Chicago, and I believe we've got one in Atlanta that we're looking at right now, too. Um, and we've got some systems for the taller buildings as well uh, that I'll bring up here in a second. So when we were doing our research, we're like, well, does our controller really need to be listed? What If it does, what does it need to be listed to? And like I said, NFPA 92 says, yes, you need to be listed to UL 864, which is standard for smoke controls. Um, and in the US, UL 864, this is kind of a little uh, figure from there. It has, uh, you know, what controls need to be investigated by UL 864. And of course, your FSCS needs to be, your FACP, uh, your main controller. And then on the right side, you'll see point logic controller. And that point logic controller is where we fall in. Uh, the problem is, is the standard doesn't have a whole lot about uh, listing a point logic controller. So we went back and forth with our um, national recognized tech testing laboratory and and uh, they wanted us to include some of the things that the FSCS actually uh, requires as well. And one of the big things was circuit monitoring. So on the circuit monitoring, you know, what that means is, is that if, we, if there's a ground or an open and short signal between the FSCS and our control panel, our control panel needs to recognize that and it does. So what we do is we throw a warning, like if, if we lose a signal or if there's a short in the signal, we throw a warning and automatically start the system. 
and get that up and going. We also include three pressure transducers in our controller so we can have multiple zones where we're reading in the stairwell. And then we can recognize if we drop a, a transducer for some reason, we recognize that and kick it out of the PID equation and uh, go with the existing the remaining two uh, transducers. Um, the three transducers is, uh, is a, it's a little bit better way to uh, balance your stairwell, uh, whether or not you open up the door above the, the fire floor or a door below the fire floor can actually, you know, have different requirements for your air coming in. So uh, that, that having those three pressure transducer can actually help you figure out exactly what's going on in that stairwell. Um, the, the heart of our controller, uh, the heart of our system is the L864 controller. And again, that um, you can hook up, you know, a fan, you know, a VFD, we can work with, you know, uh, uh, Lauren Cook fans, I guess, or anybody's fans, I guess, Cook, Green Heck, you know, uh, Pin Barrier, or anybody's fans. But, um, you know, we, we uh, have our own um, system that basically, we also have an inlet damper, I'm sorry, <laughs> out, um, a relief damper and everything like that as well in there too. Got a little bit uh, off on my thing there. Now, if you have a very complicated system and we have, let's say one in Baltimore where you have a corridor kind of halfway through or the stairwell kind of breaks up halfway through and people have to just run down essentially a link the stairwell and down. Um, or if you have really tall buildings, we actually have another controller that or an additional controller we can add to our system that will actually regulate the injection points. Um, and what this does is make sure that we actually have the right amount of air at the injection points as the building is, is you have different pressure zones in the building. We just make sure, hey, that we're going to have uh, the right amount of air on, let's say we have one injection point for every other floor. We make sure that we're reading the pressure between that floor and that zone and that that stairwell will be more pressure, un, you know, under a higher pressure than the, the floor itself. So if someone opens up the door that, you know, if especially it's a fire floor, the smoke won't get into the stairwell. Again, that's for, uh, you know, the complicated buildings or very tall buildings. Uh, the L850 is the, uh, basically the secondary control for the advanced um, stairwell pressure system. And we also use our own actuators, proprietary actuators with a two second uh, operating uh, between zero and 90. It doesn't operate like that in practice. Uh, during the uh, operation, you know, we use our PID loop to control the, the flow going out of that damper or injection point. This is kind of showing you um, kind of what how the system goes together. You'll have your main L864 controller, and then you have your sub controllers with your L850. And again, this is for complicated systems. Typically, we just need the, the main A, uh, L864 controller uh, for your system. This is showing you a hierarchy of uh, the controller. The controller needs to be, you know, by NFPA 92. Um, you know, it needs to be able to be activated by a manual pull or the FSCS, which we can take in those signals. And then we start driving uh, the system. Uh, we're doing all of our checks and the fans, you know, if there's a fire smoke damper or a fire smoke detector in there, making sure everything's good to go. And we're also sending out um, information to the BMS. Uh, so the BMS can tell what's going on in the system. And if you do have uh, the advanced system with the L850 controller, it's also a sub to the LA, uh, L864. And finally, I just want to kind of want to be, do uh, bring this in for multifamily high-rise buildings. We do actually have uh, subduct shafts. So if you're doing exhaust shafts and you need a built-in subduct riser, we have a, or you need a subduct riser for the shaft, like uh, kitchens, bathrooms, and uh, uh, dryers. Uh, we have a prefabricated uh, shaft system that is uh, zero clearance. It's all UL listed to our fire rating by itself. So you, all you have to do is put one layer of JIT board on there. It's a very um, price competitive way to do the shafts and it's a listed uh, factory fabricated system for it as well. It's available in round now and it'll be in rectangle here real soon. Tim, really appreciate everything, all the information today. Um, for those of you that have some questions, feel free to reach out to your long representative. We'd be happy to answer those. Um, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, please reach out with any questions.